Welcome to the second Public Information Center for the Municipal Class Environment Assessment Schedule C for the arterial roads within Highway 427 Industrial Secondary Plan study. This study is being undertaken by the City of Brampton in partnership with the Region of Peel, and today's presentation will focus specifically on Part B roadways, which are Countryside Drive, Clarkway Drive, and the proposed East-West Arterial. This public information center requires a few actions from participants. We ask that you watch the recordings to learn about the study process and review the findings of the previous studies. And this presentation will help you discover how we have planned to address the problems and opportunities, learn about the preferred alternatives, and find out where the study is going next. Afterwards, please feel free to view the questionnaire available on the website to provide any feedback. This will help us better understand what your concerns are and what is most important to you. The comment period will be closing on August 25th, 2022. The study area is located in the northeast area of the city of Brampton, between the York Peel boundary and close to Highway 427, the CP Railway Terminal, and the future GTA West Corridor. In terms of the structure of this study, this municipal class environment assessment is currently being carried out in two separate parts. This is shown in the figure on the slide. The blue lines are Part A roadways, which are regional roadways and include the proposed arterial A2 and Coleraine Drive. Part B, which is what the current presentation is focused on, is for Countryside Drive, Clarkway Drive, and the proposed East-West Arterial. Both public information centers for Part A are complete and Part A will proceed to filing mid-2022. The current study is being completed as two coordinated Schedule C Municipal Class Environmental Assessments one for regional roads and one for city roads. The Class EA process is regulated by the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks and is followed to make sure environmental impacts are identified and mitigated and that the public is informed of major works being completed in their community. To provide a brief background on the study phases one and two, which helped identify the problems, opportunities and determined the alternative planning solution, which is completed through the City of Brampton Secondary Plan Area 47 Transportation Master Plan. This is covered in both Part A and Part B. This current study for both Part A and Part B are focused on phases three and four. These phases include completing technical studies, identifying, evaluating, and determining the preferred roadways design, preparing the preliminary preferred design and documenting the study in the environmental study report. Throughout this process, there are several major points of contact where we communicate study status and findings to the public, including through this presentation. At the end of the study, which will indicate the end of phase four, the public will have the opportunity to review the environmental study report. If any questions arise during this time, please contact the City of Brampton and the Region of Peel to provide your comments. If there are any comments or concerns, please contact the City and Region to discuss and resolve the issues. If there are any outstanding comments on the basis of Indigenous and treaty rights, you may submit an official Section 16 order to the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks. A copy of the Section 16 order should also be submitted to the City of Brampton and Region of Peel, and they will work with the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks to resolve any issues. The timelines for both studies are represented on this slide. Although both studies begin at the same time, Part A roadways progress faster than Part B, and the final environmental study report will be available earlier than Part B. For Part B roadways, the project team has spent most of 2020 and 2021 to confirm and finalize all technical studies. At the same time, the project team has been working on confirming the alignment of the roadways, completing preliminary preferred design. The environmental study report will be filed in the summer of 2022. It's important to understand that this study has been ongoing for several years due to a number of reasons. They include the following. Extensive study required to confirm need and preferred design for interchange at Arterial A2 and Regional Road 50. Coordination with TransCanada Pipeline before designing the East-West Arterial. Additional consultation with agencies to design the crossings of the Rainbow Creek. Timelines to receive creek models from external sources. Timelines to receive permissions to enter. Reviews of development applications received. Consideration of additional design alternatives brought forward by stakeholders. And coordination with proposed GTA West Transportation Corridor. The following problems and opportunities will be addressed through the current class environmental assessment study. Provide enhanced interregional connectivity, provide access to proposed development, address anticipated traffic capacity issues resulting from extension of Highway 427 to Major Mackenzie Drive, as well as development of the study area, 
Improve roadway geometrics to meet or exceed city or regional standards. Provide transit, pedestrian, or cycling facilities. Improve traffic, pedestrian, and cyclist safety. Improve intersection safety and operations. Design watercourse crossing to enhance hydraulics, stream function, and fisheries and wildlife passage. Address structural deficiencies. Improve pavement conditions. Provide a mosaic of safe, integrated transportation choices and new modes and support civic sustainability, emphasizing walking, cycling, and transit. The first public information center was held on Thursday, November 24, 2016, allowing the public to review and provide their input on the study. This slide will outline some of the comments received and how the project team has addressed the comments. For example, concerns regarding how existing properties will be managed once development begins. This will be addressed by maintaining access to existing driveways and with temporary traffic signaling used during construction. Clarification requested in the cultural and built heritage study, specifically regarding mitigations for impact on heritage properties. This will be addressed by maintaining the rural character and minimizing impact to heritage properties. Concerns with the timing of construction and property acquisition process. Property acquisition process will start once council approval is received and once detailed design has advanced to at least 60%. The policy direction for the next transportation master plan is to provide the network plan, policies, and programs to support Brampton's 2040 vision. Brampton 2040 vision began in mid-2017 following Council's direction to develop a comprehensive document guiding Brampton's future as a connected, inclusive, and innovative city. Implementing Vision Zero as a strategy, the goal is to increase safe, healthy, equitable mobility for all. The Complete Streets Plan recognizes that although streets may have varying properties, all streets should have been designed for people, for placemaking, and for prosperity. This will be considered for this study. The existing land use within the study area is primarily rural and agricultural, with some industrial and commercial development. However, for future land use, significant growth is projected with increases in both population and employment. The figure on this slide is from the Highway 427 Industrial Secondary Plan. The alignments have since been refined during the current study. Several technical studies were completed as part of the current study. The project team completed a Stage 1 archaeological study, which determined that 84% of the study area exhibits archaeological potential. The recommendation from this study is to complete a Stage 2 archaeological assessment, which will be completed during detailed design. A built and cultural heritage study was also completed, which identified 12 built resources and cultural heritage landscapes. As a result of these findings, a number of mitigation measures are suggested for detailed design and construction. The transportation safety and traffic operations study was also undertaken revealing a few key safety concerns, which has been addressed in the preliminary design. The current study also looked at integrating with the master environmental servicing plan and addendum. This plan was completed for the entire secondary plan area to provide guidance on development. This EA study ensured consistency with the master environmental servicing plan in terms of environmental and stormwater work. A fluvial geomorphology assessment was also completed that identified the existing watercourse crossings which have been impacted by agricultural practices and identified recommendations for channel realignment. A contamination overview study was undertaken which identified properties near or on the road which may have sources of contamination. As such, recommendations were made for detailed design and construction to complete soil and groundwater sampling to further assess the site's conditions. A natural environment assessment was completed which identified a number of species found within the study area and a number of drainage features. There were three species at risk in the area, bobolink, barn swallow, caspian tern. As a result, a number of mitigation measures are suggested for detailed design and construction. A stormwater management study was also completed, which looked at both the existing conditions where no formal stormwater management infrastructure is present and future conditions where low impact development features will be incorporated in the preferred design. The stormwater study is currently ongoing, but will be finalized prior to filing. A geotechnical study and hydrogeological study were completed for most of the study area. A noise study was completed which indicated the need for noise barriers along certain locations of the Part B roadways. Further investigations are being conducted to confirm the height of the noise walls and any noise mitigation required as part of the development, which will be addressed through the development process. Evaluation criteria were developed to evaluate all alternative alignment options. Each criteria had equivalent weight. The categories included economic, planning policies, 
natural environment, social environment, and engineering and technical factors. For the proposed east-west arterial, four different alignment options were developed and evaluated. This included the transportation master plan alignment, an alignment shifted to the south of the transportation master plan, an alignment shifted to the north of the Trans-Canada pipeline, and the last alignment which was shifted one block to the north. A large factor that went into developing these alignments was the coordination with Trans-Canada to ensure the pipeline was not impacted while meeting all of the requirements. Through the evaluation of the different alternatives, it was determined that Alternative 1, which was the Transportation Master Plan alignment, was the preferred alignment. This option had the least number of impacts to all categories. Four alternatives were also developed for Countryside Drive. Alternative 1 is to widen evenly on either side of the existing right-of-way. Alternative 2 is to widen to the north of existing right-of-way. Alternative 3 includes widening to the south of the existing right-of-way. And Alternative 4 is widening to the southeast of Countryside Drive, then to the north to Regional Road 50. Through the evaluation of different alternatives, it was determined that Alternative 3, widened to the south, was the preferred option. This alternative has the least impact to existing properties. Four alternatives were also developed for Countryside Drive and Highway 50. Alternative 1 included a shift north with a standard tangent. Alternative 2 included a shortened tangent. Alternative 3 included a curve through the intersection. And the last alternative included a shift south with a shortened tangent. Through the evaluation of different alternatives, it was determined that Alternative 3, which was the curve through the intersection, was the preferred alternative. This was the least impacting to existing properties. Four alternatives were also developed for Clarkway Drive. Alternative one is to widen evenly on either side of the existing right of way. Alternative two is to widen to the east of the existing right of way. And alternative three is to widen to the west of the existing right of way. Alternative four is a winding alignment. Through the evaluation of the different alternatives, it was determined that alternative one widen evenly on either side of the existing right of way was the preferred alternative. This alternative was a preferred as it was more in line with the block plans. This slide provides an overview of the preferred alignments for each roadway. For the proposed east-west arterial, the preferred alignment is alternative one, which is the transportation master plan alignment from phases one and two. This alignment will be just south of the Trans-Canada pipeline. This Countryside Drive preferred alignment is Alternative 3, which is to widen to the south of the existing right-of-way and curve through the Highway 50 intersection. The Clarkway Drive preferred alignment is Alternative 1, which is to widen evenly on either side of the existing right-of-way. The preliminary cross-section for the proposed east-west arterial is a 36-meter minimum right-of-way with four travel lanes and a median. Active transportation facilities include multi-use paths on both sides of the roadway. For Countryside Drive, there are two different cross-sections, one for east of Arterial A2 and another for west of Arterial A2. Four travel lanes are proposed for both cross-sections. The cross-section east of Arterial A2 includes a center-left turn lane, while the cross-section west of Arterial A2 includes a median. Multi-use paths are proposed for both cross-sections on either side. For Clerkway Drive, four sections are proposed. The first two sections include two travel lanes and multi-use paths on either side, and section one is a 36 meter right of way and includes space for landscaping, while section two is a 30 meter right of way and includes an enhanced swale. Section three of Clarkway Drive is a 30 meter right of way with two travel lanes, a median, on street parking, and cycling space on either side. Section four of Clarkway Drive is a 31 and a half meter right of way and includes four travel lanes and multi use paths on either side. This concludes today's presentation. We encourage that you review the slides again in the role plans of the preferred design and provide us with any comments or concerns you might have. The comment period deadline is August 25th, 2022. Your input will help finalize the preliminary preferred designs in the final environmental study report, which will be prepared and placed on public record for 30 days. We will issue a notice of study completion when the environmental study report is available for public review. Please feel free to contact any of the individuals listed on this slide for further information. Thank you.